Let's look at an example of the discrete Fourier transform. So recall we have a set of n data points, f sub r, spaced by delta x. The discrete Fourier transform will give us a set of n amplitudes, call them f hat sub n, and we can compute those as f hat sub n is a sum r equals 0 to n minus 1, f sub r e to the minus i 2 pi over big N, n times r is what's up there. Uh, at, and this gives us these amplitudes at various angular frequencies given by 2 pi over big N delta x times little n, whatever that little n value is. Let's consider a very simple example here. So let's look at f at 0 is 1, f at 2 is 4, f at 4 is 3, and f at 6 is 2. So we really just have four data points. So our spacing between our data points is 2, and big N, the number of points, is 4. By the way, we would write this not uh, as we have above, but in order to do the discrete Fourier transform, we'd call that f0 is 1, f1 is 4, f2 is 3, and f3 is 2. Just labeling each point by the integer 0, 1, 2, 3. All right, so now we can compute the amplitudes, the f hat sub 0, f hat sub 1, f hat sub 2, and f hat sub 3. And we can do this one by one. So let's just start with f hat sub 1. So what does this mean? Well, taking our expression above, this means we compute the sum r equal to 0 to 3, f sub r e to the minus i 2 pi over 4 times 1 times r. Okay, so that is four terms. An f0 term, putting in r equal to 0. An f1 term, putting r equal to 1. Same thing for f2, r equal to 2. And f3, where we put r equal to 3. Okay, so we can compute these out. So we get 1 minus 4i minus 3 plus 2i or minus 2 minus 2i. So we've learned that f1 hat is minus 2 minus 2i. Okay, so we can do the same thing over and over again for the f0 hat, f2 hat, and f3 hat amplitudes. So let's just do that. So f0 hat, the sum would look like this, the sum 0 to 3, and now there's a 0 in the exponent. I'm not going to do the math, but you should get 10. should check that you get that. Same thing for f hat sub 2. Now there's a 2 up in the exponent. And do some calculation, you get minus 2. And the same thing for f hat sub 3. Now we put a 3 up in the exponent for their sum. And you should get minus 2 plus 2i. Okay, so I just skipped all the calculations there, but that's what you would get when you do little sums. Okay, so summarizing our calculations, we started with a set of four points, four data points, n equal to four with a spacing of two. And after our discrete Fourier transform, we now have four amplitudes, f hat sub zero, f hat sub one, f hat sub two, and f hat sub three. And we never needed delta x at this point. Okay, so that's what the discrete Fourier transform is. It just spits out a bunch of these numbers. Uh, but we need now to interpret this. So what does this mean? In particular, what does f hat sub 2 equal to minus 2 mean or represent? So we talked about how these are the amplitudes. And so f hat sub 2 is the amplitude of the angular frequency p, which is 2 pi over big N delta x times little n, where a little n here is this 2, the subscript on f hat sub 2. So angular frequency pi over 2. That's what f hat sub 2 represents. So what about the amplitude of, say, f hat sub 1, which is minus 2 minus 2i? That's complex. And this is a general point, which is that the discrete Fourier transform is, in general, complex. And I mean that in more ways than one. So if we want to interpret the amplitude there, well, we obviously need to just take the absolute value. So let's take the absolute value of our amplitude, in particular the absolute value of f1. 
or that's f hat 1, f hat 1 star square rooted, uh, and you should get 2 square root of 2 there. Okay, so then this is the amplitude of the frequency given by p is 2 pi over big N delta x times n, and here is 1, so that's the amplitude of the frequency pi over 4. Okay, so you can do the same thing for the other ones. Uh, it should be obvious at this point that computing the discrete Fourier transform by hand is a major pain. Uh, it's just not very fun to do by hand. In general, we won't do it by hand. In fact, we're not going to do it by hand anymore. We're just going to use a computer. A computer is really good at this. Uh, in particular, we're going to use, uh, most computers use an algorithm called the fast Fourier transform, which obviously is faster than the usual discrete Fourier transform, uh, also denoted by FFT. And so we're going to explore that in our next video.